Well, it's not just important, it's vital. Like, this is how I feed my family. This is what we do. Uh, we do this not just to, for some fun thing. This is how we feed the kids. This is how we pay the bills. So our bread and butter here is basically big furniture, like uh, dining tables, conference tables, and whatnot. And then uh, we also do smaller stuff like living room furniture, bedroom furniture, a um, little bit of that stuff too, but a lot of charcuterie boards, a lot of cutting boards, a lot of butcher blocks, a lot of uh, wooden countertops for kitchens and stuff, a lot of new construction stuff. Um, we also do a lot of interior design art projects too. Um, pretty much anything you can build it, we can make it. All right, welcome to the shop. Um, over here, we have most of our wood storage that's indoors. We also have wood storage out there. Um, our, most of our slabs come from Costa Rica. We've got um, anything from wild tamarind to cashew to uh, monkey pod and perota. So monkey pod, they call it Costa Rican walnut. Um, there's a lot of different items I use, but it all comes from Costa Rica. Um, they got the biggest, widest slab selection. It's uh, naturally fallen rainforest timber. It's ethically sourced. Um, we don't have anything that's cut. It already has to be fallen. They have pretty strict harvesting rules. Um, so I've got uh, wild tamarind, cashew, but I also use domestic hardwoods as well, like uh, walnut, pine, oaks, and everything in between. You know, it's all about uh, what the customer likes. You just can't find domestic slabs that are single slabs that are this big. They just don't exist really. And when they do, they just, they're gone. This little guy, this little chunk of uh, hard maple, it's got some nice spalting in it. This is a coffee table for my buddy. I'm gonna put some steel legs on this and then uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's all, it's all fabricated, nothing's bought. This is wild tamarind. Uh, this is unfinished. And then over here, this is the same wood. This is wild tamarind as well. And these are, this is what it looks like in finished form. So. Hopefully our customer comes by the end of the week and picks this up because I'm sick of dusting it off. <laughs> the, the resin that we use, it's a deep pour. You can pour up to two inches deep at a time. So usually the, these are at least two pours since this is a three inch thick table. But we like to fill all the voids so food doesn't get caught in there. Yep, after it's poured, we usually take a, the three and a half inch Makita hand planer, plane all the excess off, then we sand it smooth. And then I put six coats of Polarian catalyzed urethane finish on it. And it's the most bulletproof finish I've ever seen. It's pretty durable stuff. Over here, we have our woodworking equipment. Most of it's Bailey, of course. Um, right here is my joiner. This is my second Bailey machine I ever got. Um, these, you run, a, you run your glue joint pieces off of this joiner. It makes it for a nice tight joint, so it's invisible. Um, next, this is the first Bailey machine I ever had. This is my bandsaw. It's the 14 inch bandsaw. Um, use it for cutting down high timbers um, or resawing. Um, it's a great, I got a three quarter inch blade in here, so it's a resaw blade, but you can make fine little cuts if you put a thinner blade on there. This is my spindle shaper. It's probably my least used Bailey machine, but it is probably the most efficient one because you can make all these interlocking joints. You can make a, some cool router joints on this too. Um, dust collection works great on that machine. Uh, this is my, the big boy. This is the biggest uh, lathe that Bailey makes. Turn bowls on this, baseball bats for my cousin plays at Michigan. He's a Wolverine center fielder. I turn uh, all kinds of bats for him and his teammates, mostly training bats. Um, this is my spindle sander. This is what I make all my really cool edges on my charcuterie boards and whatnot. Um, makes quick work of edges. Um, over here is my 20 inch Bailey planer. Soon I'll be outfitting it with the uh, spiral cutter head with the indexable carbides. It's a great machine either way. It's got a five horse motor. It is it makes quick work of anything that needs to be planed down. It's a badass machine. So back here, we have the, the most important machine in my whole shop. And it should have been the first one I bought, but it was like my fifth. This is my Bailey um, dust collector. It's got a three horse motor. It's, it's, the, uh, it's the tornado, so it's got the funnel. It's really easy to pop this bad boy off and just empty out your dust. I probably do it twice a day when we're in high production mode. Um, this thing, it's got a HEPA filter on the back, so it keeps the air nice and clean in here. We still usually wear respirators just to preserve your lungs, but this bad boy keeps my shop really clean. All right, let's go check out some finished items in my upper garage. So this first piece here, this is a monkey pod top. Senecero is the, the proper term for it. Um, that's also monkey pod. This is Perota. This is a desktop. I'm working on making the base for it. And over here we got some root balls. 
Then uh, over here, I got my little rounds. Those are just cross cut pieces that we, uh, you can make little uh, little end tables or um, cutting boards or anything out of those. Got a couple finished bases over here, ready for some tops. Uh, those are some steel bases I got from my buddy up in St. Cloud. Uh, I got some snake wood over here. Uh, that's pretty, pretty dang hard wood. Got this uh, wicked cross cut piece here. That's gonna be a coffee table as well. This one right here? Yeah. And then uh, that big, that big crop. You see how big that tree must have been, huh? Yeah. That's a, that's a proto uh, tree as well. Yeah, that's about it. Just nice to have because they're really good stuff, but they're essential to what I do because they, they make it possible for me to basically make the, make the nice tight glue joints, you know, make a nice straight cut or uh, anywhere from just being reliable and, and dependable to uh, just being some really, really cool machines. But what I like the most about them is if I got a problem, I just call my buddy over at Bailey in Manitowoc and it's taken care of. Shane is a multimedia martial artist, as he proclaims. He uh, boosted my business from just a few hundred followers to thousands of people following me and doing what I do. Um, he shined a spotlight on me because he believed in what I do. Um, he basically put his money where his mouth is and uh, invested his time and uh, reputation into my business here. Um, totally, totally couldn't do it without Shane. He's an he's a awesome fella. You remember the, like the hashtag Bailey Army, like you're in the club. It's like you're uh, part of this network of uh, people who make cool shit. Um, it's not just about a stupid name and a stupid process. It's about being a part. Like, it's almost like a like a fraternity of dudes. We all kind of network together. Um, it's a trusted group of people. We all share each other's stuff. Um, the Bailey family has really been welcoming and. Uh, Totally part of my whole success uh, is being self-employed. I, I mean, it, to be honest, I really couldn't do without them. I've got three daughters. Um, two of them have a great interest in making things. Uh, as soon as they get old enough to be responsible to operate these uh, dangerous machines and tools, I'll get them in here ASAP. Right now it's basically cleanup duty. So, um, but my three girls are definitely gonna carry on my legacy of making cool stuff, for sure.